The other day, I was asked in my group chat with subscribers about who my favorite game development studios were. Without hesitation, I quickly spit out the first names that came to mind. Naughty Dog, Insomniac Games, Rare, and goddamn Raid Shadow Legends. But with my mental list, something seemed like it was missing. I knew deep down that there was another game development studio that I thoroughly enjoyed, but I couldn't think of who it was. You got pranked. It's Arcane Studios, one of the most innovative game development studios out there. The amazing people at this company are the masterminds behind Prey, Deathloop, and most importantly, Dishonored. I did shit on Deathloop for a bit at launch because it was buggy as balls, but it's undeniably one of the most innovative games of the year. That may not be saying much, but it's true. The cool thing about Arcane is that they aren't afraid to take risks and innovate, and it really shows in their games, which is the main reason why I love them so much. You see, AAA studios these days are more focused on securing consistent income with generic, uninspired releases that bring them money. Arcane, on the other hand, thinks outside the box and comes up with concepts that may or may not work, but that are creative and exciting. And nothing is quite as creative or exciting as their masterpiece of a game known as Dishonored. Dishonored is one of my favorite single-player adventure games of all time, and it's my favorite stealth game by a long shot because you can do this. This game truly revolutionized the stealth game genre, and it was Arkane's first title that put them into the limelight. With overwhelmingly positive Steam reviews, countless awards won, millions of sales, and tons of active players even today, Dishonored has left a massive, influential dent on the gaming industry as a whole. So, what makes this game so good, and why is it without a doubt one of the best AAA games of the last decade? What specifically about Dishonored has allowed it to hold up for so long? Is there hope for a third game in the series? We're going to talk about all of these things and more in today's video discussing why Dishonored is so awesome. Dishonored follows the story of a badass dude named Corvo Atano, the royal bodyguard to the empress in charge of the city of Dunwall. Dunwall reminds me a lot of the streets of Miami, Florida, where there's nasty ass rats everywhere, the people act like they snorted bath salts for breakfast, and it smells like rotten eggs. Anyway, the city isn't doing too hot because the Black Plague is going around and killing everybody, and it's gotten a bit chaotic out there. Good thing we have the awesome Empress to make everything right. She is such a nice lit. Oh shit. Well, that's unfortunate. Turns out the Empress gets assassinated and Corvo's the one who gets framed for her murder. Wait a minute. You're telling me that this friendly looking guy stabbed you in the back and framed you for murder? I would have never expected that. But yeah, so you get framed, the Empress daughter Emily gets kidnapped and you get thrown in jail to be executed. Looks like you're gonna die and the game ends there. How sad. Just in time though, someone doesn't want you to get got, so they break you out of jail and recruit you to join their cause, expose what truly happened, and set Emily back on the throne. That is the introduction to the game's story, and as you assume, things progress and get out of hand pretty quickly. The people who rescued you are led by a guy named Admiral Havelock, and I'm sure him and his handsome companion aren't going to backstab you either. I mean, they look super friendly too. You go through the process eliminating a few key targets for these loyalists, and right as you kill the new Lord Regent, who framed you and took the throne after killing the Empress, this guy backstabs you. Wow, how surprising. So as he tries to kill you but fails, you make it your goal to find Emily once again, kill Havelock, and give the throne back to his rightful heir. While the game is a bit short, sitting in at around 11 hours of gameplay, it is very fulfilling. And yes, I did condense the story a lot, but the point of this video isn't to summarize the story of Dishonored. If I wanted to do that, I would pretend I'm IGN and make an entire video that summarizes the story without mentioning that there are multiple paths and ways to do literally everything in the game. Oh, look at that. Smooth transition. That's where I can bring up the first thing that makes this game so awesome. The ability to choose how you want to play. The story itself is good, with outstanding writing, characters, and world building. But everything about the game, including the story, gives you complete freedom to do things how you want to do them. The narrative is set, but you can choose how you affect the world and the story with your own actions. For example, you can play this game the way you would expect, where you kill every enemy you see and wreak havoc across the city. Or you can play as a complete pacifist. You can kill any of the targets that you have to assassinate, or you can deal with them in other ways. You can do the side quests, or you can completely avoid them. The game doesn't hold your hand in any way, shape, or form, and it gives you the ability to shape your experience how you want to. I mean, the entire ending of the story changes based on how you played throughout the game and how much damage you caused to the city. When you kill more enemies, the ending is much darker than if you play as a pacifist. You can truly be yourself. But freedom of choice in Dishonored is even deeper than that. 
In every level and every scenario, you can take tons of different routes, handle things entirely differently, or avoid confrontation altogether. For example, in one of the last missions in the game, you find yourself in an extremely armored and busy fortress with enemies and cannon towers and all types of shit around you in every direction. Being a primarily stealth-based game, you would expect that you would have to sneak your way through it. And while yes, you can do that, you don't have to. You see, what I did was jump on top of the big-ass cannon tower of death, rewire it to attack the enemies, and watch it do all of the work for me. This tower single-handedly plowed through dozens of enemies like that one mission in MW3, except, well, these ones were actually enemies, and I wasn't the one controlling it. It was epic, and it allowed me to easily walk right in the front door afterwards. But if I wanted to, I could have done that from the start and avoided the confrontation altogether. It's entirely up to me. Before we go any further, I want to take a minute to thank the sponsor of today's video, Ridge. Ridge is an outstanding brand of high-quality compact wallets that have a small footprint and could hold up to 12 cards and cash. These things rock, as you've heard me say in other videos, and I've been using my Ridge wallet for the last few months and loving every second of it. All wallets from Ridge come with a lifetime warranty, and there are over 30 colors and styles available like rose gold and burnt titanium. And to end it all off, the Ridge team is so confident that you'll enjoy their products that every wallet comes with a 45-day money-back guarantee. If you want to upgrade your wallet game to the best of the best, switch to Ridge today by clicking the link in the description and using code ROBOCAST for 10% off. Thanks again to Ridge for sponsoring this video. So I talked about the story and the freedom to play the game how you want, which are two of the biggest selling points of this game. But there's a lot more that makes Dishonored one of my favorite games of all time. And one of those things is obviously the stealth. Yeah, surprise, whoop de doo I'm talking about the stealth mechanic in one of the best stealth games of all time. It's basically a requirement, like owning a Kia Soul and being weird. But the stealth in this game is top-notch, and it's some of the most well-rounded and perfectly executed stealth that I've ever seen in a video game. As you're going around assassinating all of your targets, you have a wide variety of weapons at your disposal. You have your traditional sword, a crossbow with sleep, explosive, and normal darts, traps, a pistol, and some other things. You can use these tools just like you would expect, but there's even more. Corvo has supernatural abilities that he acquired through an interaction with an entity called the Outsider, and you can use the abilities, combined with your weapons, to create unique experiences. Blink is a lot of fun to use because it allows you to easily and sneakily kill enemies by reaching weird locations and attacking from different angles. There's also one called Devour, which sends a swarm of rats at your enemies, Possession, which lets you possess enemies, Dark Vision to see through walls, Bend Time to slow down time, and a few others. My personal favorite is Shadow Kill, where if you kill an enemy without alerting them, they vanish, where other enemies can't find their body. It is a lot of fun to use, and it makes the stealth kills much more satisfying. These combinations of weapons and powers, plus the endless playstyle possibilities and the countless paths of attack, allows for a truly unique experience with every level, every time you play the game. For a fairly short, story-based game, Dishonored never gets boring every time you replay it. Everyone always complains about short games, but I would much rather a game be a bit short and leave you wanting more than to be like any Ubisoft game and overstay its welcome. Yeah, I loved Ghost Recon Wildlands for the first few hours of gameplay, but when you do the same thing over and over and over and over for nearly 40 hours, you get bored and your opinion of the game gets tarnished. Dishonored doesn't do this at all, and in fact, last time I beat it, I instantly started playing it again on the same day. It's that much fun. The game has 9 distinct missions, and each of them offer a lot of variety. There's the one I mentioned earlier where you're breaking into a maximum security fort, one where you have to attend a masquerade party and find your target, and one where you have to escape through the flooded district. Just like Tide Pods, they all have their own unique flavor and taste, and you never feel like you're stuck doing the same thing over and over again. These missions take place in different regions of the world, all of which also feel entirely different. Dunwall is an outstanding place, and the developers did a great job with the world building to really make it feel like it could be real. I'd much rather have a fleshed out, detailed, and charismatic level-based world than a big-ass open world that feels about as dry as my DMs on Instagram. There's no point in having a ton of stuff if all of that stuff is meaningless and empty, and Arcane understood that when they made the world of Dishonored. You can see the specific separation between the rich and powerful and the poor and the sick, and the city feels like a place that's literally going through a plague in the midst of a struggle for power. It's outstanding, and when you add all of the lore and clues that you can find to tell you more about the world, it becomes extremely immersive. 
The immersion continues when you look at the cast of characters that you come across in the story. They don't feel like generic, forgettable video game characters, and they all have their own personalities and quirks. Yeah, most of them are dickheads, but there's Samuel, who single-handedly makes up for everyone else's shortcomings by being a cool-ass guy. Piero feels like a dorky, weird tinkerer, and Havelock absolutely plays the part of a tough, stern general who's probably gonna backstab you at some point. The characters feel real because of the awesome casting done for the voice actors in this game. Havelock is voiced by John Slattery, the guy who plays Tony Stark's dad in The Avengers and Roger Sterling in Mad Men. Lena Hadley, who plays this chick in Game of Thrones, voices the disgruntled maid in the Hound's Pit pub. Dowd, the leader of the Assassins, is voiced by Michael Madsen, who played Tony in GTA 3 and had roles in countless other games and movies. They even have Daniel Hagen as a voice actor in this game, who played a ton of different supporting roles in major games like Red Dead 2, Mafia, old Star Wars games, and a bunch of other things. The cast is actually outstanding, and they did a great job at selling the setting. And with the story, level design, world building, stealth, and freedom of choice that I mentioned earlier, helped to make this game such a masterpiece. I'm not going to waste time talking about every mechanic in this game because it's nearly 10 years old and you know the gist of how these videos work. I don't have to mansplain a game to get the point across. But there is one more thing I want to mention about this game. The achievements. I never thought that I would have a section in a game review crediting the achievements for anything at all. But here I am. The achievements in Dishonored are honestly some of the best video game achievements I've ever seen. Too many games have bullshit achievements that, if you're a completionist, will make you begin to hate the game. Achievements are almost always an afterthought, and they don't make the game any more fun or enjoyable. For example, I loved Outer Worlds, and I decided to try to get it 100%. But when I started looking at achievements that were stuff like, kill 100 enemies with this type of weapon, and kill 1000 enemies with this type of weapon, I lost interest and gave up. The achievements in Dishonored aren't like this, however, and they each allow you to have fun and experiment with different challenges in the game to try to get 100% of them. There are pacifist and aggressive-based achievements, easter eggs, collectibles, challenges, and a lot more. Since this game is already so much fun to replay, it's easy to dive into the achievements and try to get them to fully experience everything that this game has to offer. Honestly, I find the discussion of what makes achievements good to be pretty interesting. So let me know if you'd like to see a video talking about the topic down in the comments below. But yeah, the achievements are the final touch that really helped to make this game such a masterpiece. There's obviously more to Dishonored than that, and there are other things I can talk about like the DLC, but I don't want to waste your time. I think this video delivers the point without rambling on for too long, and I think you understand why this game is so highly rated. Believe it or not, I haven't played Dishonored 2 yet, but I plan on giving it a try in the near future. If you have played it, however, let me know in the comments if it's worth it or not. Anyways, that's going to be it for today's video. I hope this helped to give you a taste of what this game is about, and I look forward to seeing your comments and messages on Twitter and Instagram, both of which are linked below. I will see you guys next time, and peace.